Welcome to Hubcast by Impact Hub Lagos, a podcast for the Nigerian innovator, change maker, and entrepreneur. In each episode, we will bring to you exciting and inspiring content where we will share knowledge, insights, opportunities, and real innovator stories from Impact Hub Lagos community. As the bloodline of our economies, entrepreneurs need to be supported and given every opportunity and resource to succeed. It is our mission to empower you from intention to impact. This week, we are speaking to Tolu Awuderu, customer success and enablement specialist in the HR tech space. Tolu has experience coaching HR leaders within the high growth organizations to use data to drive company culture and improve employee experience. In this episode, we discuss the key steps for building strong teams, the importance of diversity in teams, building team trust, how small businesses can motivate and inspire their team, as well as how to build an organizational structure. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Hubcast by Impact Hub Lagos. My name is Adeze Nwadike, and I am communications lead at Impact Hub, Today I have with me my very good friend Tolu Awodero. Hi Tolu, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited. Thanks for having me. Okay, great. So we're just going to go right into it. Today we're talking about building strong teams. So can you tell us a bit more about yourself and your work? Yeah, sure. So I have a background in business and HR management. I'm really passionate about helping individuals and organizations achieve their goals. And so over the last two years, I have coached and supported high growth organizations in creating a feedback strategy for the organization, especially using data to drive their company culture and also improve the overall employee experience. That sounds really interesting. Um, Yeah. So let's talk about building strong teams, especially as a small business. Why is it important for a startup, a small business to have a strong team? Right. When it comes to building strong teams, I think, you know, any organization, big or small, it's really important to build strong teams because they are the core of how organizations achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. For small businesses in particular, you have to think about the impact that building a strong team has the ability to sort of you know, make innovation um, fast, you know, the, the ability to identify problems quicker and also produce effective solutions. It also helps to have that more authentic working relationships where individuals between the teams are able to be more motivated and, you know, feel support in terms of doing their best work. Yeah, so I think it, it's really good that you said all of this because sometimes I think we think we know things or the reasons why we should be doing something, but we often take it for granted. And I think building a strong team is something that people often take for granted when they're building their business. So it's really important to get that reminder of why it is important to have a strong team from the get-go and be intentional about that. So now we know why it's important. What are the steps that every small business should take when they're building their team? All right, that's a very good question. So, I mean, the first thing I would say might sound very obvious, but I would say is to establish your team's goals, right? And this is important because you want to be able to provide clarity on what's expected. And it also makes collaboration within the teams a lot easier. So, for example, when a team is faced with making difficult decisions, it's your goals will ultimately help you narrow your focus. So, that's the first thing I would say. So establishing your team goals. The second thing is to be clear about the roles and responsibilities of everyone who's in that team, because this is going to encourage that ownership and reduce the friction when it comes to who's accountable for what. And then I'll say the last thing is to establish your team processes. So think about what are the core processes that will help you foster better communication, collaboration, accountability, and encourage the team to continue to reflect as a team. And so, for example, how often are team members meeting up to check in on the progress or address any challenges that they may be having? How are teams balancing the use of synchronous and asynchronous communication? 
um, so that they're working more effectively, really, because especially in the world that we live in right now, not everyone is able to, you know, show up at the meeting at the same time. So that's really important. And also providing an opportunity for team members to also provide feedback to one another and about especially around the effectiveness of the team as well. So establishing your team processes is really important, but I would say one of the most important things as well is just understanding that and being open about refining this process as you evolve as a team. Okay. I think, um, you know, with COVID-19, especially this year, so many things changed and, you know, there were companies that had already established their processes and they're like, this is how we do things and we do things with this way or that way. We understand how our team works well. And then COVID came and everyone is at home and that really changed things and it yeah. changed the dynamics of how people work with each other. So with that in mind, how important is it for someone who's building their team to understand different work styles? Hmm. Yeah, so I think when you're talking about people working in teams, we're essentially humans that have different personalities, right? And so our personalities will definitely reflect in the ways that we work. So teams being able to acknowledge different working styles shows that one, you're being respectful, you're showing empathy, and you're showing support to your coworkers in what they need to be productive and do their best work. And so one of the ways that I've found companies do this is to ask employees to share sort of like a user manual, something that would let people within the team understand this is how best I work. Mm -hmm. It could include things like, you know, setting work boundaries. These are the hours that I prefer to work. These are the hours that I prefer to have important meetings. Mm -hmm. Establishing your working habits in what ways am I wired in my routines and how I achieve tasks as well? Even things like my communication style, how people prefer to be recognized or as well as, you know, things like how do people respond to conflict as well? So I think it's really important that, especially in the world that we're living in now, that we're more conscious about how people work Mm -hmm. um, because it's a whole different dynamic. Okay. So you mentioned, you know, people being honest and open about, you know, their preferred work styles and what works for each member of the team. So as a manager mm -hmm. or someone who's building a team, bringing all those different personalities and all those different preferences together, how do you now choose the right management style for your team? Hmm. This is a, is a tricky one in the sense that I would say that your management style is also truly a reflection of your own personality as well. Mm. And so managers need to find a ways of, you know, it's more around how do we create a more conducive environment for our people to grow. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, you know, creating ways for employees to feel more empowered. How inclusive are we being do we have a two-way communication where people feel that they can really thrive as a team? So mm. I think those are the things that will really determine how to foster that environment. I think that's one of the most important things the manager should really be working on is like really being that, mm -hmm. that, that person that creates conducive environments. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. leads into our next question because, you know, going back to COVID, a lot of things changed and people were, you know, kind of thrown thrown, um, and kind of confused about how to, you know, keep people motivated and inspired and keep their team spirits high when there's that, you know, that loss of physical connection and, you know, the mm -hmm. daily check-ins that you would do in person. It really changes things. So um, in times like yeah. this, where we're, you know, we're definitely moving more into, you know, working from home and like digital um you know work experiences as we go into the future right how do we keep teams motivated and inspired when there is you know a loss of that physical connection yeah that's a very good question and i'll say the first thing is to continue to communicate the importance of the mission right because mm. When we're not in the same space, it's easy to forget what we're here to do, right? Mm. So 
how are we creating ways for communicating that mission even more often and letting employees have that bigger picture in front of mind mm-hmm. second thing i would say is you know encouraging team members to express their gratitude and also providing regular feedback on um to one another because this will show that you care for the work and their development and also motivating people to actually try new things and not being scared to lose or to fail mm. and that brings me to my next point which is many times when you're not working in a physical space mm-hmm. it's, it's sometimes difficult and hard to know that everyone else is also might be experiencing some sort of challenge or the other and that can really be motivator so mm-hmm. i'll say how our team leaders or managers fostering an environment where teams can share their knowledge and lessons in them so that way you don't feel like you're alone in this world of your challenges and mm. people are able to do better work when they hear and understand the other challenges that people are going mm-hmm. through yeah. and i'll say the final thing would be for teams to find ways of just staying connected and strengthening that relationship sort of outside the day-to-day work so mm-hmm. how are you setting up those casual meetings to you know just get to know each other you know checking on well-being because well-being is super important in this time as well and i think it's really often neglected mm-hmm. the impact of all of this on on, when, on well, the employee well-being yeah so i'm just gonna you know dig a little bit deeper into your last point because you mentioned you know setting up casual team meetings for your team to get to know each other and check in our well-being but we've been hearing a lot about how people are tired of you know zoom they're tired of online meetings they don't want to have any more even if it's casual so how do you think that someone uh you know an entrepreneur or business person a manager can deal with the very specific challenge of you know people are just tired of zoom like how does this work in that context yeah that's a very good question and it's really all about balance right and if we go back to the questions that we asked around, you know, working style, people have different personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, some people totally enjoy the fact that they're not really having that interaction with people. Mm-hmm. But I think the key is just creating environments. And I think that's what I said about the manager's role is saying, you know, I'm acknowledging that there's a gap. I'm acknowledging mm-hmm. that, you know, something can be done. And it's just leaving that open, not saying, oh, you must join you must do this, you must do that. And another thing I would say is, as opposed to adding more casual meetings, is how are we using our regular sort of standard meetings to check in on some of these things mm. and not just dive straight into work talk or things like that. But, true, true. you know, asking about, you know, how was the weekend? What did you do? You know, so just little ways like that where it just feels more part of the day to day things as opposed to maybe sort of creating separate times so mm. those are some of like the two ways i would approach it that was a really good answer <laughs> so let's talk about rewards and punishments when you're building your team right yeah what do you think is the best way to reward good work or punish bad work do you think you should reward good work or punish bad work is it like a mixture of both what is the best way to go about this and how do you know team leaders decide the best way to go about Mm. things like this very good question and i guess i'll flip this question in a way starting off first with saying that you know when we think about rewards it's often you know related to people achieving certain outcomes or certain results Mm -hmm. and that's very much so tied to some sort of compensation that at a fixed time Mm-hmm. Some most of the time, right? Yeah. So when you think about a small business who might not have the financial capacity to sort of reward in maybe financial ways, mm-hmm. it's important to start to think about other ways to show employees that you care about the contributions that they are mm-hmm. having. Like their contributions are valued within the organization. So saying you know how are we cultivating a culture where recognition is a norm where people feel that you know it's okay and it's sort of encouraged to appreciate people to recognize people Mm -hmm. because this is more ongoing right Mm -hmm. it's not Mm -hmm. fixed Mm -hmm. to oh i'm gonna get a bonus at the end of the year or Mm -hmm. you know things like that right so it's more a way of acknowledging 
and reinforcing positive behavior because that's really what organizations really want to do. You want to be creating an environment where employees are continuously, you know, reinforcing that positive behavior yeah. within your employees, right? So that's sort of how I would, you know, frame that question in terms of the, the you know, reward is how do you make it more ongoing where you're recognizing people and their contributions on an ongoing basis. Mm-hmm. But in terms of your other question and like punishing bad behavior, so to speak, where I think when employees are not delivering on their role, there's a wider conversation that can be had about how you manage performance mm-hmm. in general. And I think we would probably need another conversation about that. But in mm. general, I would say that it's important to advocate for a growth mindset where you're acknowledging that there's room for individuals to develop as opposed to sort of like punishing that bad behavior in Mm. in that way where you know you're assuming that there is that opportunity for growth and Mm. I think that's oftentimes a good way to approach performance Mm. thank you for that so now we're going to talk about mistakes that businesses make when they're building a team. So can you tell us some of the most common mistakes that, you know, people make when they are thinking through how they're building their team or building the team? Mm, that's a good question. And I'll tie this back to the first question or one of the first few questions around how to build a team. And I spoke about the importance of setting team goals. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I feel is often very much overlooked is the actual process of creating those team goals, Mm. right? Many times this is done by leaders with little or no input from, you know, the people who are actually executing on those goals. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that collaboration is really important when it comes to team members you want to make them feel bought in in the process right so this is a complex thing to do depending on the type of business or the what you're trying to achieve but i feel like small businesses are in a better position to create that environment where goals are being set in a more collaborative way and then really just enables people to feel from the onset that my voice matters Mm -hmm. in this process that I am not just being told, you know, what we need to do, but I have an input in how, mm-hmm. like, how we're going to deliver on our mission as an organization. Mm. So that's one of the mistakes or, like, lessons that I would encourage small businesses to foster more of that collaborative decision-making processes. Okay. So now we're going to talk about diversity. I think that... In this day, diversity is such a buzzword. Everyone's talking about diversity and why that diversity is important when you're building a team. But some people might not really understand why diversity is important. They might know that it is, but they're not clear on the reasons why it's important to have a team that's truly diverse. So can you tell us why diversity is important? And even like a little bit about what diversity really means when you're building a team. Um, that is so true. I think that, you know, diversity is certainly a buzzword now that, you know, organizations are using and people are mm-hmm. talking about a lot. Um, I'll say like, you know, the benefits of, you know, having a, a diverse team is that you're really able to tap into the various unique experiences that individuals are able to bring mm-hmm. and teams will benefit from a richer perspective of that collective knowledge Mm -hmm. right so and really this is only going to result in you know people having you know better ideas thinking outside of the box you know being able to avoid those blind spots and you know producing better results for the organization Mm -hmm. so that's really you know one of the key things of why diversity of you know thoughts diversity of of backgrounds experiences Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in all different ways is really important because you know the pool of what becomes possible um much bigger it gets increased essentially Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. when there's that multiple perspective in the room okay so 
you know with diversity that means you're going to have differences right you're having different people in the room with all their different experiences different knowledge points of view so when you have that diversity how do you then build synergy within the dynamics of a diverse team right you know first i'll say that businesses should not just stop at building diverse teams Mm -hmm. because the true benefit of having that diversity comes when teams are actually inclusive right what is the Mm -hmm. experience of the individuals within this team that are diverse because Mm -hmm. that's what's truly going to set you apart Mm -hmm. in terms of yes we have all the people in the room we have all the opinions in the room but do those opinions really matter Mm -hmm. Right? So it's really important not to just look at, you know, diversity from one point of view, but it's really around, you know, creating mm. that, making things more inclusive as well, mm. because it fosters that sense of belonging where people feel that their perspectives are valued and they're able to actually show up and, you know, participate in what the team is doing. Mm. So when it comes to building that synergy, I think it falls back to then having that common purpose and that common goal, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because you said, people will have that if those different opinions, people will have different perspectives, but it boils down back. Or one of the things that I think will help to center people back is what are we here to do? Mm. We're here to we're here on a united sort of common purpose and common goal, and we think about how the other question that I answered is that it's easy to impact the outcome when you have a say in the input. Mm. So if from the get go, I felt like my voice was being heard Mm. at the point of us creating the goals, then it becomes more easy Easy. for us to, you know, have a conversation to really talk about how we're going to drive those goals Mm, mm -hmm. because I had an input in the goal creation process Mm. that's so so true yeah yeah that's so true wow that's very profound Tolu (laughs) thanks for sharing (laughs) that (laughs) so I think it goes without saying that one of the key things that you have to have when you're building a team is, is is trust right trust within the team and also you know from the manager to the team and so on. So what are some key ways that a business can build trust within their team? Because like everything else, you have to be intentional about building trust, right? So how do you go about that? I would say that, you know, one of the ways to build trust is thinking about, you know, that psychological safety that people, you know, crave or need. Mm. in any relationship that they have that doesn't stop in the, in the workplace so team members need to be able to feel that when there will be no negative repercussions when they speak up mm-hmm. when they have new ideas when they question things if they have concerns mm-hmm. or if you know they make a mistake um, so one of the ways you can sort of foster that psychological safety is you know, leaders really leading by example, right? Mm. How are we leading by example among my team? So if I see that someone has done this, I feel like, okay, I can do this as well. Mm. How are we fostering that continuous feedback for amongst one another and having that open, honest conversation without feeling like, oh, if I say this, if I voice this out, I'm not going to be heard or something's going to happen. And... I think outside of that as well, it's, you know, just letting go Mm. sometimes, especially leaders, right, of trusting people to make decisions, essentially, Mm. like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just, you know, if you say, okay, I've I've given you this responsibility, then, you know, I understand that you have what it takes to accomplish those goals. Mm. I know that you thought about, you know, all the different ways in which it can impact us as a team, and I trust that you're bringing in the right people and the right voices and, you know, things like that. I think those are some of the ways that you can build trust is is building that psychological safety and um, leading by example, you know, providing that feedback, you know, actively listening to people when they're speaking, 
um, really goes a long way. Mm. So you mentioned a little bit about organizational culture earlier. Mm. And so we're just going to ask, how can small businesses build a strong organizational culture? Yeah, that's a million dollar question <laughs> right there. And <laughs> there's no sort of one size fits all sort of approach to this. But if you think about an organizational culture is essentially your values, right? And this is something that you embedded within organizations and sometimes just needs to be discovered. And as soon as you you know what your values are, that's going to be able to help you determine how people behave and how work gets done in the organization. So if you really do this well, then you're really just showing what your organization believes in and what your organization stands for. Um, and I'd say that one of the key ways to establishing that strong culture is ensuring that you're hiring people whose priorities also sort of align or are synced with your company culture. You know, if people don't believe um, or acknowledge or appreciate your culture, it's going to be very difficult for you to um, for you to live it out because culture is not something that's just something on the wall that says, oh, this is our values. You also need to be living out those values, right? So it, it, it falls into the people that you hire as well not only from the perspective of you know this individual has to fit my culture but how is this person also going to add you know to to our culture because the thing is strong cultures are also built on a continuous and conscious effort many organizations feel that you know we have a great culture we started off so let's maintain what we have but you know culture evolves mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know organizations need to be able to understand how to adapt and evolve their culture as they grow because there will be those growth pains at some point as, as organizations grow you have those growth pains and um, you need to be able to adapt and evolve for the business to continue to progress for you to be able to achieve the goals that you set and your mission at the start and I'll say that sort of the final sort of the big part in understanding how to adapt and evolve is thinking about ways of measuring the health of your company culture and this is where having that culture of collecting feedback from your employees comes in where you're showing employees that their feedback matters that their opinion matters so within small businesses, you know, having those, you know, open forums, how do you from the start create that culture of open and honest conversations um, and, you know, doing this in a number of different ways, whether that's through surveying um, the questions about how, what's going well and what's not going well within the organization, mm -hmm. having open conversations about those pain points and you know continuing to show commitment to making sure that you're putting you know people at the at the forefront of how you build your organization so yeah i think you know building strong culture is a meaty topic but mm -hmm. i mean those yeah. are sort of some of the things that i think are important mm. Okay, thank you so much, Tolu. That was really insightful. I'm so glad that you joined us on today's episode and took your time to really break things down. I think I learned a lot and I'm sure that everyone else who's going to listen is going to get a lot of really good insights as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So thank you everyone that's been listening. This is Hopcast by Impact Hub Lagos. I'm Adezi Mwadike. Till the next episode.